Hello and welcome to Nordic Labour Film Festival's fourth edition. And today we, we will uh, talk about uh, how to organize uh, radical filmmakers or uh, the filmmakers who work with uh, labor issues or the issues what we are bringing into the labor film festivals. So today uh, with us we have a Steve uh, from uh, from his uh, assistant uh, professor or lecturer in Bristol uh, University and also he's a founder of Radical Film Network and also uh, we're going to talk about his new book uh, the book but about uh, contemporary radical film culture network and organization and activism and that uh, is directly relevant to the Radical Film Network and how and how we can actually learn from uh, Steve's experience and from this book and Radical Film Network, how we can actually uh, organize some similar kind of things or networks in Sweden and in Nordic. So, uh, welcome, Steve. Hey, yeah. thanks very much. Yeah, so, uh, well, I'm uh, very excited to, do, uh, to see your book, actually. I mean, this, this is actually it's based on Radical Film Network, basically, what you have done, and then it's now you want to present actually uh, what is a I mean, what is the results of Radical Film Network, basically? Yeah. So yeah, the book did the book did come out of out of the network. Um, I think one of the frustrating things for me about the book is that it could never be the network in its. The network is much bigger than you could ever fit in one book. I think we've already there's like two hundred and something organizations in the network already from like i can't remember how many countries 30 something countries around the world so it's like the network is like grown way bigger than we ever kind of dreamed really when we when we thought when we thought we'd try and um set it up so so the book um oh, there you go. There, there, there. yeah so um it, i think one of the things we really tried to do <laughs> yeah okay is uh <laughs> Is really try to do justice to some of that, some of the diversity in the network, um, and to yeah, to show off okay. like some of the different okay. What what um, what you have idea behind? I mean, already you have explained some, but I mean, what is what is your mind? And yeah. uh, obviously, you are the one of the editor. Who are the others? Um, so yeah, so 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 yeah. When I say when you introduce it as my book, <laughs> no. I I, uh, I wrote well, it. yeah. I, I'm one of three editors. So there's a whole bunch okay. of different chapters in there. From I think we've got about 20 chapters in the book, um, and then there's three editors that kind of help pull it all together. So myself, um, Professor Mike Wayne at Brunel University in London, and uh, and Dr. Jack Newsinger, uh, who is at um, the University of Nottingham. Um, I think we've we've all been involved in the network since the start, pretty much. Um, I'm pretty sure they have. And we just we really felt it was time to try and do a kind of a publication that brought together, um, you know, a, 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 a taster of how kind of diverse and eclectic uh, contemporary radical film culture is, because there hasn't been a book that does that um, for some time. Um, and maybe I, I'm not aware of another publication actually that tries to do that on a, on that has the sort of same global scope, but also tries to think about radical film in terms of formal radicalism, um, political radicalism, um, geographic radicalism, but also uh, radical film activity that's not just production that includes film production, but which also includes um, distribution, archives. Uh, radical film history, uh, radical exhibition practices. There's a whole range, a whole section on film festivals and interrupted screenings and, and all kinds of things like that. So, so we really wanted to think about this kind of radical film as a holistic thing. So from every sort of bit of the production chain, so production, distribution, exhibition, and everything in between. Um, and that's sort of what the Radical Film Network is all about as well. So people tend to think like, oh, the Radical Film Network, that must be for filmmakers. Well, like, yeah, it totally is. But it's also for all the other people that are involved in it, writers, curators, uh, academics, researchers, you know, <coughs> organizers, activists, um, artists, 
co collectives, all everyone basically who's involved in any aspect of like socially or politically or aesthetically um, uh, innovative and experimental moving image. Now, of course, it's, it's uh, I mean, Radical Film Network is focused on the whole global. I mean, it's not only one, but what is your focus basically? Area, well, country? Yeah, well, I mean, my, my area of sort of expertise is, is within the UK. So I'm most familiar with, with the UK really. And I think, you know, we tried really hard to get a, a good range of perspectives from, uh, from outside the UK. Uh, but I think it is inevitably, you know, because of, of like, you know, all the, the editors have been based in are based in in England. So, uh, you know, inevitably it's sort of um, UK slash Euro centric to a degree. But we've also got chapters in there on India, uh, Cameroon, Greece, Morocco, Palestine, Israel, um, North and South America, Spain, China is in there. The um, uh, queer film festival, Beijing queer film festival. Um, so, so we tried really hard to get that kind of international diversity, but, um, but yeah, so, but in terms of my focus, I mean, I guess, yeah, I guess like where I'm most active really has been within the UK, I suppose. But I mean, one of the things about the RFN that's been so lovely is seeing it grow and develop. And over the last maybe three or four years, it's really taken a kind of international turn. So we've got um, people, uh, a couple of people across India setting up um, sort of divisions or, or chapters or uh, uh, or iterations of the Radical Film Network um, in India. And there's RFN Berlin is going to have its second event next year. That was massive last year. Um, uh, so so it's and then of course like uh, uh, in in Sweden, the Radical Film Network developing there. So it's really exciting to see it kind of um to grow it see it growing internationally and to see that there's a need for a radical film network not just in the uk where it started but all around the world yeah good uh, okay I've, if i come to your articles or your research what you manage uh, or like uh, publish in this what is admin will make or break the rebellion can you tell us oh, yeah. what it is yeah yeah sure so that's so um so that's the chapter, the title of my chapter. So admin will make or break the rebellion. Um, and then the subtitle is building the radical film network. And it's, it's sort of a reflection on um, where the net, where the network came from, um, why we decided to set it up and what the challenges have been. So, and I think one of the important things about writing that history is because it's quite rare for radical organizations to be able to kind of document their own history and think about themselves as in a kind of historical way at the same time as doing their activist work whatever it might be um and i think that's so 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 actually one of the problems and one again one of the reasons we set the network up was because contemporary kind of activists or other find it harder to then access their own history so you find that you know new generations of cultural activists quite often might not necessarily be aware of the historical precedents that kind of came before them and so one of the things with the rfn was like absolutely about like well let's let's set this network up but let's actually let's really recognize that we're coming after this amazing organization in britain in in the uh, 70s, 80s, and, and 90s called the Independent Filmmakers Association, which the IFA, which was the kind of radical film network, if you like, which was a radical film network, uh, set up in 1974 and ran until 1990 and did amazing things. And so we were like, you know, I my job is a I'm an academic. I teach film studies and I'm a kind of cultural historian. Uh, and I was researching this history of radical film in Britain and you found out quite a lot about the IFA and was like, Oh my God, this is awesome. We really yeah. need a radical film network now. Uh, it was something to do what the IFA was doing then today. Cause there wasn't like, you know, everyone was quite like spread out and didn't know what everyone else was doing. And, um, and like a lot of the people that were working, you know, uh, in radical film culture um, today in, in the UK weren't, didn't necessarily know about the IFA. So it was like, well, look, we got to try and connect these generations up. Let's try and rekindle the spirit of the IFA for the digital era, if you like. Um, so anyway, so my chapter talk, sort of talks about 
talks about that, talks about some of the challenges that we faced in setting the network up, um, some of the key ideas behind it. Um, and yeah, uh, and then some of the some of the like where where I think it might go, some of the problems we've had, um, kind of with one eye thinking about how you know people that might be thinking about all well, like, you know we should try and get networked as well trying to like, write an account of the last seven years from my point of view and say well look this is maybe this was our experience and maybe you can learn from it um and not make the mistakes that we made <laughs> uh, yeah but we must be doing something right because the network is just growing and growing and growing so that sounds very interesting Okay, and uh, the, the next chapter you, of your research on, on Morocco, third cinema in Morocco, what we learned, or what is, uh, you're following, I think, for a long time, Morocco. Or, uh, or... Yes, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I'm a kind of uh, enthusiast about third cinema. I think um, it's what um, Nadir is, is doing in, in Morocco is, is really interesting, a you know, contemporary incarnation of third cinema. I think quite often when we talk about third cinema, um, people, you know, rightly think about, you know, Latin America and Africa in the 60s and 70s and, you know, the Arrow of the Furnitures and all of that, um, and Blood of the Condor, you know, all these films that are amazing and that, that, that incredible period of film history. Um, and I just think it's really exciting that there are people, not just in Morocco, but, uh, you know, in other places around the world as well. There's a, a group in, in Mexico, um, for example, Um but also very much explicitly working in a third cinema tradition. So we are we are making third cinema. So so that's something that we wanted to draw attention to as well. And I think one of the interesting things that um, Nadir makes in that um, part of the book is uh, is just this. Uh, well, the title. What we ended up calling it the, the the title of his piece, which is "We Need Critical Magazines, Debates, and Spaces." And I think that's another thing that's maybe missing from contemporary radical film culture at the moment is this i you know this sort of zine culture so if the rfn has a mailing list for everyone involved in it can share ideas and all that and communicate and promote each other's work and you know on social media as well but there's no like magazine or publication that's fairly that's regular that like they used to be like the ifa used to publish newsletters when it was around um and that's, you know, that's just one example but like I don't think radical film culture really produces that at the moment. There's no forum for it, should we say? Um, and I think that's something that um, Nadir is saying as well. Like we need debates, we need magazines, we need the spaces to talk about and promote this sort of stuff beyond like ourselves and beyond like the culture that um, that we kind of create and inhabit. Um, All right. Mm. Okay, before we go to the Radical Film Network or idea behind, I would like to uh, share your book, Where to Get. So we'd like to... That's, yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, what you... So yeah, so that's the... You can get 20% off. I think it's like 20 quid on Amazon. Um, or maybe it's 20 quid with that discount. I can't remember. Okay. Um, but you can also buy it direct from the publisher okay. and not, not give any money to Jeff Bezos. But um, okay. yeah. But, but anyway, uh, I will share the link with uh, this video in any way. So. Yeah, yeah, do, do. I think, you know, it's a really, I think, it's a, I, you know, obviously I'm really proud of it. It was a lot of work pulling it together, not just me, but of everyone, all the other contributors to the book um, that, you know, it gives a really, I think, valuable insight into what, you know the state of radical film culture at the moment um and it's yeah i, I hope it'll be a valuable thing in fact i was on a, a meeting the other day with um a uh, guy in the philippines king katoy runs um the the video for change network with engage media and he was saying how useful it is to have this kind of research so that's very encouraging <laughs> for people like me that write this stuff They're like oh it is useful it is useful yeah, yeah of course it's a you know, uh, useful because this research is not sake of research. It's, it's you're giving back actually yeah. to, uh, to organize. It's not just the sake of, you know, research. Here. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's, I mean, one of the challenges actually with the book is writing it, but one of the exciting things about it is that the Radical Film Network that the book has come from is a like on a live project. It's, you know, it's not something that's been and gone and that we're writing about it retrospectively. It's changing all the time. And so it's very much like, you know, long term, we're all absolutely into 
building the network for the long for the long term. I'm going to be doing this, you know, forever. Um, and so it's so it's always changing and developing, and I think that's really that's really exciting. And then hopefully, um, other people will will do other books that are also you know that the RFN can help like convene. In fact, Intellect, another publisher, got in touch with me recently to ask you know to say would you would you be interested in in a book series editing a book series where other people could come along and say well we want to write this book about radical film culture in scandinavia and then the publisher would 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 support them to do that so, so i think right, there's okay. a lot more work left to do it's, it's yeah, sure, of course okay we need uh, now we'll go to radical film idea so because we want to organize uh, talk tomorrow uh, and then i will yeah. we'll show what is radical film network basically so what is okay tell me in short what is idea behind rfm um and when is started and where yeah, sure. Uh, so there's, I guess, there's three three kind of core ideas that underpin the Radical Film Network. So communication and collaboration among the the people that are involved in the network to facilitate that, um, to connect up different generations of radical film culture activists and practitioners, and then thirdly to promote the work that everybody in this culture does beyond the culture itself so to raise the visibility of everyone's work and i guess the principle behind it is that we're all greater than the sum of our parts i suppose and that um so so i mean to say a bit about where the network came from um so i was uh doing my phd uh researching the history of radical film in britain uh and at the same time I co-founded with some friends and colleagues and comrades the Bristol Radical Film Festival. And so at the same time as I was doing this historical research, finding out about organizations like the Independent Filmmakers Association and, and what had come before us, I was also running a Radical Film Festival and finding out about what was happening right now, like in terms of like the radical films that were being made and other radical film festivals all around the world and got to have quite a good sense of like, who knew each other and who didn't know each other and who should know each other. So like, you know, different radical film festivals just in the UK that might, that weren't aware necessarily of each other. Um, radical video activists that were doing amazing work in Brighton, but didn't know the people in Glasgow doing it. And so, you know, it was quite a sort of unique and quite privileged vantage point really to be researching this work culture and working in it at the same time. And it was just really clear that we, you know, everybody involved, not just in the UK, but all around the world, needed some sort of network to help put us all in touch with one another and help support each other. And I think one of the reasons for that is because radical film culture isn't funded. By and large, the, all these organisations in the network, 200 odd organisations, don't get any funding. They're totally off the radar of the major film funders and film agencies um so so i think there's a real need for these organizations to you know support one another however they can do it so that was really the principle behind the network we set it up in 2013 i wrote to i don't know about 100 organizations and said like this is the plan i think you know would you be up for it um we haven't got any money but so what we haven't got any money anyway <laughs> so let's try and do it without any money and, uh, and everyone wrote back and said, yes, please, that's a great idea. Why don't we do it? And then, um, so then I think about a year later, we uh, had the first conference in Birmingham. Um, and there was like 150 people came to that from all over the UK, but there was international people started turning up as well. And it was like, no, this is going international pretty quickly. Uh, and then at that conference, couple of people in glasgow were like we'll do the next one next year this is great and then so everyone decamped to glasgow the next year and then the glasgow someone was like i'll do the next one in dublin and then so and it's just sort of grown from then and and it's got and we've been in new york city with uh but like i said berlin um radical film network berlin had its first big meeting um last year they're going to do another one next year there's the rfn conference next year is going to be in genoa in italy to um commemorate in part to commemorate the 20th anniversary of the um uh, the anti-summit protest there where carlo giuliani was shot and killed murdered by the italian police um so so yeah so 
Uh, so, I, yeah, well, I don't know where I was going with that, but uh, <laughs> that's kind of like where the network has come from and what it's what it aims to do, really. All right. OK, next question is, I mean, how you conducted these conferences, workshops or what you have achieved, uh, ah. you know, as, as for the students or filmmakers and academics, what what we have achieved so far? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, there's, I think there's a lot, actually, um, but a lot of the time, I mean, there are some big things, but I think a lot of the times the, the value and the impact of the network is actually much smaller in terms of that it's about people feeling like they're not alone in terms of their politics or their film practice, whatever that's exhibition or curation or making films or feature films or video activism or whatever, or experimental movies. There's just a sense of putting people, building this sense of community internationally and that's the thing that whenever I ask people, like, oh yeah, you, how do you get involved with RFM? What do you think of it? They're always like, it's it's that feeling of solidarity that they get, and that feeling of like being part of this global community, that of other people that are doing the same kind of stuff that they are facing the same challenges, but also doing the same amazing work. Uh, and, and I think like you know, a lot of the times, uh, in terms of the the wider impact of it, I'm not always privy to what impact the rfn is having because something somebody will post something on the on the mailing list like i'm really i'm looking for films about housing activism uh i'm you know this is a, a real life example i'm looking for films about um housing activism i've heard that uh i'd really like to get hold of this film dispossession by paul sung um uh and we want to and then and then i was able to sort of through the network it's like yeah 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 i really know paul he's part of the network here's his film his email address connecting up with him and he ended up taking his film to a convention of social housing activists in poland where 40 organizations have come from all across poland to talk about the need for social housing and that's so connecting up like international activist groups um but there's loads of examples like that um yeah so i think it's Probably, I think for me, like it's that sense of community and solidarity that's the the biggest, probably the, probably the biggest impact of the network. And then at the events that everybody does. Um, so I think in Berlin, they had 1,500 people come to the event in Berlin. Similar numbers came to the massive festival, the film festival they did in Glasgow. Um, yeah. All, all right. In the end, I would like to actually suggestions for the Nordic academic students or radical filmmaker to organize our, our radical film network. Any, yeah. do any it. motivation? Do it. Do it. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, I think first slight start, probably just start by, um, you know, whoever it is, just start by writing, writing to make it, make a little list of everyone you think, you know, should be there and then write to them. So what do you think about this? And, and it's just even just doing that and the response that you will get, which you you know, if there's anything like my experience, and I've been in touch with a lot of <laughs> radical film organizations, uh, everyone will be super pleased and really enthusiastic. I think, um, and yeah, to focus on those, start small, don't overcommit or whatever. I think the thing for us, I think was always like the network, Try, we were trying to always keep the Radical Film Network as a network rather than as an organisation. That's something that I talk a little bit about in my chapter in our book, that, um, that, that Radical Film Culture already has organisations that are sort of like, you know, predominantly unfunded based on volunteer labour and so on and so on. The last thing everybody needed was this another big layer of organisation to, to kind of try and maintain so i think the key for the for the network has always been to be very decentralized very lightweight and to just try to provide the connective tissue if you like between existing organizations to just try and facilitate everyone else to be aware of and in touch with one another and to and to share each other's work um i think that's the other like major probably the major thing that the rfn does like i said at the start is it it sort of helps us all to support each other, which is a fundamental principle of like leftist principle, isn't it? Mutual aid, basically, and 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 yeah, uh, and supporting one another and showing solidarity. Um, and it's about like saying like, look, these people are doing amazing work, like what you're doing, the Nordic Labour Film Festival. That's brilliant. So it's about creating a forum through which we can all promote each other's work. Um, so that's kind of the idea behind it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Thank you very much, Steve. Okay. And, uh, no worries. Hopefully, 
stay in touch. All right. Yeah, it's really, Take really. Good to you. Thanks, thanks for having me. Yeah. And yeah, and uh, you know, keep up more power to your elbow, as they say over. Thanks. Here. Keep it up. Nice one. Okay.